Hi everybody, this is Tisha Mahar and this is your second video in a series of hormone specific videos. Today I want to talk to you guys about perimenopause as well as menopause. So to start with, what is perimenopause? Perimenopause is the period of time before menopause. During this time, your body is essentially preparing you for the stage of life called menopause. And for some women, this transition will start around, for most women, it'll start around 35 to 40, maybe 41, that kind of age range. For some women, it's a little later. They are the lucky ones. For some women, it's earlier than 35. So they're experiencing early perimenopause symptoms. For some women, the transition from menstrual cycle to perimenopause to menopause is quite gradual and subtle and it's nothing crazy and dramatic. For other women, it can hit hard and it can hit fast. So why is this happening? Why are some women getting through this, you know, fairly easily and other women are just struggling for years? That's what I want to hopefully get to the bottom of with you in this video. So what's happening during men uh, perimenopause? Essentially what's happening is your body is, it's going through the opposite process of puberty. So during puberty, everything was waking up. Your ovaries were turning on, you were getting breakouts and your sex drive was crazy, all this kind of stuff. Now the opposite is happening of, of puberty. So you're so basically your body is slowly starting to shut down or again for some women it's just shutting down it's just your ovaries are starting to fail so what happens during this time of life is some months you will perhaps not ovulate so you might think you're still everything's still happening but you might notice a difference in symptoms and that could be because you're actually not ovulating sometimes and when you do not ovulate in the second half of your cycle, there will not be progesterone. So during ovulation, some uh, progesterone is released and that's what helps balance estrogen in the second half of your cycle. And if you're not ovulating, you're not getting that progesterone release. And so estrogen is going unopposed. And when that happens, you get nasty symptoms. Now, the other thing to note here is that some women will get those nasty symptoms even if they are releasing some progesterone. As I discussed in my first video, there's such a thing as like crazy PMS symptoms. And this is usually not always, but often because of the same thing. So estrogen is dominating. And when that happens, there's cravings, there's um, uh, weight gain, there's crazy amounts of water retention and bloating, there's mood swings, there's depression, there's um, issues with sleep, there is um, anxiety, low libido, joint pain, there's a whole array of symptoms. Now before I go further, I want to say this. Hormone imbalance is tricky business. There are so many different types of hormone imbalances that can overlap. For example, adrenal fatigue, hypothyroidism, um, estrogen dominance. All of these symptoms can seem or sound or, um, you know, be similar. So please do not try to diagnose yourself via Google. Okay, because you're just going to make yourself so anxious and so stressed and you could very well be misdiagnosing something. So when it comes to hormones, it's really a good idea to consult with someone you trust. That might be me. It might be your naturopath. It could be whoever. And or even better, get some hormone testing done. Then you're not guessing. You know exactly what's going on. Um, in my next video, I, my, in the third video in this series, I'll explain my personal journey with a hormone imbalance that I had and how initially I did think it was one thing and it turned out to be another. And I confirmed that with testing. So it's really important. You don't want to learn that one the hard way. Okay, so when you, um, if you are having 
rough symptoms, if you're going through this stage of life and you're having rough symptoms, if you're really struggling, if that second half of the month for you is just like, ugh, like kill me now, if that's happening for you, here are some things that will likely help. First of all, you have to manage your stress somehow. You have to take care of your adrenals because your progesterone during this time of life, and especially if you're having these symptoms, is already too low. And when progesterone is low, um, or sorry, uh, when that if that's happening and then you're also stressed, what's happening is when your adrenals are not functioning well, you're in a state often of low cortisol. So you've been high, high cortisol for 10, 15 years, and now your cortisol level is low. So that might be confusing to some of you, but that's what happens in the latter stages of adrenal fatigue. So if your cortisol is now low, what cortisol does is it steals from your progesterone. So cortisol can actually use, or your, your adrenal glands can actually use or take progesterone and convert it to cortisol. Your body is amazing. So it wants to keep you alive. It needs to keep, you know, all the, the hormonal symphony happening. So it'll steal your more of your hormone. So you already had low progesterone because of this change of life, but because your stress is so high, now you're losing even more progesterone. Okay. So this is a huge thing. So I think that the reason a lot of women, this is just my opinion after all the people I've worked with, it seems like the women who have the toughest time during this life are the A-type women who push themselves too hard, whether it be with tons of hardcore dieting, whether it be through you know 20 years of doing intense amounts of exercise, whether it be really high stress jobs and not sleeping enough, stress is a huge part of why you were having these symptoms. That goes for PMS and PMDD stuff that also goes during perimenopause and menopause. Okay? Now, um, I'm just going to see what the time of this is. Okay, so I'm going to do the third video about menopause because I'm blabbering on here and then the fourth video is going to be about um, PCOS and um, amenorrhea. So a couple more to come still. So this is all perimenopause today. So what do you need to do about this? First of all, you really need to attend to your, um, your stress levels. Like I just said, you need to work on your self care. So um, that's going to go a long way. So whether that means like cutting down a little bit on caffeine, um, adopting a bedtime routine, um, meditation, yoga, what a bath every single night, whatever helps you to de-stress, you need to prioritize that now. Otherwise, this is potentially going to get worse for you. So self-care is key, managing stress. Um, at this time of life, you really need to start, if you didn't before, to manage your blood sugar. So you need to eat a clean diet. You gotta get rid of the sugar and the processed food and all that stuff that spikes you up and then crashes you down. Because when you're spiking your insulin, that causes disruption to your hormones. So you need to balance your hormones now, and that isn't gonna help. So really balanced diet, you know, you know, three meals a day, for example, with lots of vegetables, with protein and healthy fats. Generally, women at this time of life, generally, do better with less carbohydrates. So getting rid of the grains and the sugars, and even, you know, if you are somebody who eats a lot of fruit, that's gonna probably make your blood sugar crazy. So you might wanna, you know, think of cutting that back, maybe just doing one serving a day from like a low sugar source like berries. So balancing blood sugar is the next important thing. Uh, making sure that your detoxification pathways are running well, that is important. Your liver is responsible for detoxifying all your hormones. So if you're having estrogen dominant symptoms during this time, which is common, um, really making sure that you're loving up your liver. I have videos about liver love, you can watch that. Um, 
uh, that will help you to detoxify that estrogen. Another important part of that is making sure that your bowels are moving regularly, making sure that you're not constipated, that type of thing. Um, Sometimes we have symptoms of estrogen dominance due to environmental toxins. So if you're using a lot of like toxic cheap makeup, consider getting that out. If you're drinking a lot of BPA rich plastic water bottles, uh, if you're drinking from plastic water bottles, um, that's a source of environmental estrogen. So getting rid of that stuff. Um, and then a few things that I often recommend to my clients who have this, there's a supplement, it's called um, EstroSmart Plus. It's the same thing that often works beautifully for people with PMS and PMDD. It's an amazing product and I swear to you, sometimes people don't notice a big difference by, you know, within one month, but usually by the second month they're like, oh my God, I will never stop taking this. And with the um, dosing of that, the bottle, I think, says to take two a day. If you are having bad symptoms, take four a day. It won't hurt you. I've recommended that to, I, I, I shouldn't say it won't hurt you, but I really don't think it could because I've recommended that four capsules per day to, to so many people, and um, it's helped so much. Uh, everything in it is wonderful and natural, and yeah, so... So I would recommend that. The other two options are, I'll put a link to that below this video. The other two options are um, using progesterone cream. That works really well for some women. Um, not for everybody. If you have more questions about that, please join my group on Facebook, Tisha's group, and we can have a discussion. There's a certain way you want to use it. I can provide more information about that. Progesterone cream, there's also this product um, that I really love and I've had a lot of client, clients um, respond really well to and it's called Progescence. It's an essential oil actually that has a little bit of yam extract in it which is a natural source of progesterone. So that can be helpful um, for a lot of people and it can be a much gentler source of the progesterone um, than the cream. So. Yeah, that's about uh, perimenopause. Now, in these hormone videos, I've been talking about how you can achieve your body goals, whether that be weight loss or, um, you know, building muscle or whatever, during these hormonal changes in your life. And in perimenopause, what I often see, and this goes for menopause too, which I'll get into more later, what I often see is at this time of life, the metabolism is slowing down a little bit. So if you didn't start weight training before, get on it now because you're going to start losing muscle mass as the years go on. Um, the other thing is that your um, tolerance to carbohydrates sometimes is less. So you might store more weight by eating more carbs. And that especially happens for a lot of women during menopause. This might especially be true for you if you're finding that the fat is going specifically to your tummy. So if you're gaining more of the weight here instead of like in your butt and thighs like you did when you were younger, that's been happening for me lately, which is super fun. Um, if it's not here anymore and it's going here, that's a good indicator that you are, you know, starting to move through that period of life or it could also be that you're just super stressed out because cortisol will cause like high stress levels can cause belly fat. Um, probably both might, you know, might be happening together if you're in that age range. So you really want to dial in the stress. Um, like I said, but the diet is really important. Um, Oh gosh, now I'm losing my train of thought what I was just saying. Oh, uh, okay, anyways, um, the last few things I will say, oh, oh, yeah, 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 sorry guys. So as it relates to your, your goals, so you, so cleaning up the diet, um, because the metabolism is slowing weight training, which is going to help you keep muscle, which will boost your metabolism. And also the more muscle you have on the body, the more insulin sensitive you are, which means you will handle, you'll be able to get away a little bit more with, you know, what's in your diet. If you're somebody who's super sedentary, 
I really recommend that you go low carb. If you hate to exercise and you're never gonna do it, you're probably gonna move through this time of life much better on a lower carb, higher fat diet with tons of vegetables as your source of carbohydrates. Um, as far as exercise go, goes, usually at this time of life, women are gonna do way better with short, high intensity workouts. So that's like alternating, for example, sets of 30 seconds intense exercise with 30 seconds of lower or or doing interval type workouts where you do, um, you know, one exercise for 30 seconds, like a, a pu like push-ups, and then you do, you know, um, running on the spot for 30 seconds, and then you do, um, you know, tricep dips on with you know, on the bench for a few sets. So, so taking, you know, six exercises and doing like three rounds. So like circuit style stuff. This can be really helpful for boosting the metabolism. Now, one thing to note, and I just want to say that's much better than going on a treadmill for like 30 minutes, five times a week. That's not going to help you now at this stage of life. And it's probably just going to make things worse because that is very stressful. Long duration cardio is actually quite stressful on the body. Now, high intensity workouts, they can also be stressful. So I recommend them if, there's always an if, if your adrenals are okay, if you're sleeping okay, if you're, you know, not feeling like inside. If, if you're not feeling overly stressed, HIIT workouts will be really helpful for your metabolism and for leaning down your body a little bit. If you're storing tons of weight in your stomach and you feel super stressed out to the max, that likely will make things worse. So again, talk with someone more about your specific situation, please. Or join my group and ask me anything you want because I love helping you guys. I live for that. Okay, so yeah, you're moving into perimenopause menopause, yeah, your body's working against you a little bit more than it used to. It sucks, but it's not the end of the world, and there's so much you can do. You just can't get away with as much anymore, and you have to just dial it in a little bit. So it's time, you know? Take good care of yourself and clean your stuff up. And a lot of women, what happens is they, they realize that, and they do what they need to do, and then they feel better than they ever have in their life. So it could be an opportunity for you to finally take really good effing care of yourself. I love you guys. I'm gonna do another video, a quick little video, maybe like a live video on my page, maybe tonight or tomorrow, because I have some fun news. So I'll share that in my live video. Okay, I love you guys. Have a great day. I hope this has been helpful as always. Join my group, it's on Facebook, it's Tisha's group. Search it in the toolbar um, and uh, ask to join the group. I'll accept you right away. And you can post questions there about anything health-related, yoga-related. I'm a huge yogi. Um, those of you who know me know that. Um, uh, anything related to health, hormones, anything. <laughs> I've been obsessed with all aspects of health for like 12 years now. Okay, have a great day and thanks for watching. Bye, guys.